Good morning, Silvana. Good How morning. Good morning, Steve. I'm Thank great. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for being here, uh, Silvana. Today, I want you to introduce yourself first of all. Mm -hmm. I see you in the gym. I see you in the coffee shop for the gym, and we met each other. But I need to know more. Let me know your small story, mm. and then we move on to the main topic of today, which is uh, biohacking. Yeah, I mean, I I joined this gym about uh, six, seven months ago because uh, as part of my hormonal expression, I needed to start introducing more strenuous uh, strength resistance, uh, weight resistance exercise. And um, then one thing led to another. They knew who I was and who I am. I'm uh, the leading um, female chef in the Gulf region simply because in my profession as a chef, it's very difficult for a woman to break through that glass ceiling for some reason. It's a very male-orientated profession, very testosterone-heavy, super hard, very demanding, very physical as well. So, you know, we women known as the... I don't know, weaker sex or whatever, not that I believe in that, but you know, that's the general feeling out there. So I'm half Turkish, half Bulgarian. I've lived in UAE, in Dubai for 10 years. I was TV chef back in London. I was always on BBC. I also appeared on ABC in the States. I had my own shows as well, again, on UK TV channels. Up to date, I have about 13 different cookbooks. And about seven, eight years ago, since I moved here, I started thinking, I want to use food, I want to weaponize food. I don't want to use food as just a meaning of survival. I really want to weaponize it in a way to keep me stronger, make me younger, totally reverse my aging process so that my best kept secret is available for everyone. And what is my best kept secret? This is to be actually having the experience, the knowledge, the ability, the confidence of my chronological age, but at the same time to have the strength, the zest, the energy, the vitality of my younger biological age because my biological age through biohacking it's a lot younger than my chronological age my hormonal expression is that of a 35 to 38 year old woman and I am way before above that in chronological years my body organs my energy levels everything all of this is actually the expression of a much much younger female and this is possible mostly through food food is actually the original medicine as we know we hear about it but we just don't pay attention. So I'm a mother of two. I'm a grandmother of two as well. Alhamdulillah. You look so thank young you so much. being a grandmother. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, I love being in Dubai. And in the last eight years, I started working exclusively in the field of longevity, biohacking and anti-aging. And now, please, your uh, listeners can try. If you go and Google world's leading biohacking chef, my name comes on. And this is, I couldn't realize this was the thing because a month ago, I started doing research and I thought, look, let's what other biohacking chefs in the world do? There are none. It's just me. Why? Because um, you need to know intricately well each ingredient and what it does. So to make it very easily digestible, the food I eat, it's actually food for my cellular health. I need to feed my cells. At the same time, I need to eat particular other foods to get rid of, of my senescent or zombie cells. But this is maybe a subject sometime in future when we talk, because as we grow older, a lot of our cells die and then they don't clear themselves depending on our lifestyle. If we have sedentary lifestyle, lifestyle that is actually fueled by foods that are not good for us, for our biome and our gut, then these cells, they settled within us and this is how the problems start. So I'm very happy to, to say that I'm very much on the cutting edge of biohacking. I work with a lot of uh, biotech companies, especially in Switzerland now, to develop interesting strategies that are connected to the technology sides of longevity because longevity is the new buzzword and it's not just a buzzword is a thing i truly believe that we can easily live up to the age of 100 plus it is not an illusion it is not a mirage we can now how we take care of ourselves it's the key yeah you know i just want to give you one hint uh, you know that my bachelor degree is uh, biotechnology so, oh no i didn't yes. know that yes oh wonderful yeah wow. so uh, we are speaking on the same uh, page and same language as well and uh, i do advise people to eat well but the problem is 
when you tell someone to go and eat. They either don't have time, especially in Dubai, or they don't find the right food to eat. So this is where you come. And this is amazing that what you're saying, and uh, you might open up extremely big doors for people to listen yeah. to you and yeah. to follow you as well, you. in terms of what they should cook and how should they take care of their health, not the taste of the food only, which you're mixing very well. Mm. I've tried uh, the dishes that you have uh, applied here, although I'm on a carnivore diet now, but even though like the chicken or the beef that I go for, you mentioned it is very, very well special. selected yes, and very it well. It has this tenderness, the taste, so it does not make my life boring, although it may sound boring, but with the help of people like you, it's yeah. tasty and yeah. uh, you can sustain with it. Exactly. I mean, listen, like, um, so since I joined the gym, they approached me, they knew who I was. They said, would you like to help us? For me, it's been just the best thing that could happen because people here are wonderful, positive. People are flying. I also attend a lot of biohacking conferences and summits around the world and where people getting together and are all biohackers. So what is biohacking? We need to explain. Biohacking is when you do things to hack your own biome. It's a bit like a iPhone or telephone hacking or computer okay. hacking yes. or people sometimes hack uh, elections. So it means that you interfere in some way. But uh, biohacking is actually, you're biohacking your own biome, your own biology to be a better, stronger, more versatile, more effective person for yourself and for your family. Because, you know, I always tell people, you either make room now for health or later for illness. You choose. It's going to cost you a quality of life plus a lot more money. Now, the bottom line is that you mentioned the meat, the meat here, for example, the meat is very important. For example, it has to be, if it's not bio, because bio is difficult for people to afford. And let's be honest, if the, everybody in the world started eating bio meat, there isn't enough to go around. But the meat we eat has to be grass-fed. Why grass-fed? Because people like you, who are very health conscious about their muscle, their buildup of muscle, like we have plenty here, men and women, they should eat more grass-fed proteins, animal proteins, because they exactly have this property to actually feed the muscle, these short amino chains. No other meat, if you go for grain-fed meat, it doesn't have it, you know? So these are little intricate things that we need to know. In my case, I cycle my regimes. Three months, I feed my collagen. Next three months, I would feed my liver, my kidney, my spleen. Um, next three months, I will eat for my heart. Next three months, I will actually eat for another, for my hormones. Right now, I'm in a hormonal uh, kind of uh, three months, so I would eat foods that uh, would feed my estrogen, estradiol. It's a little bit more tricky when it comes down to female hormones. And as you know, the big problem now is that a lot of very young women are into perimenopause, menopause, and they wonder why they think it's something to do with them. No, no, it's to do with the lifestyle, it's to do with the food we eat. Most of the food we eat is depleted, completely depleted of goodness. Yeah. So therefore, it's very important. And for me, this is the ultimate luxury. I feed myself in such a way that... I shine, I feel strong, I feel invincible. And when you feed yourself like that, it does something to your mind. You're no longer depressed. You're no longer feeling inadequate. You're no longer feeling insecure. You're no longer feeling not good enough. And in my case, you're no longer feeling hypochondrical because I've never had a problem with security. Valo is because through my work, I had to be. I had to be somebody who wins all the time because it's all this man, you know? But let's be honest, quietly, we all have our own insecurities deep down in us, so I'm not that brilliant but when it comes down to the way I eat now I no longer fear the worst while before I was just oh hurts here oh hurts here oh what's going to happen now and this and that because you know you're doing so much wonderful things by yourself then you shining example for the people in your family my sons my husband uh, their wives uh, their children everybody is eating in this way so also my audiences I have a lot of audience in Russia and in Bulgaria they follow, they sponge everything I say because they see it. It's like you are a personal trainer, right? Yeah. See, look, you look amazing, mashallah. So I would go to you and say, he looks good. I want to look like that. But if you are overweight with a big belly and lethargic and slow and a you pity... You have to lead by example. Exactly. You exactly. have to do it for yourself. And it's the same for me. I will yeah. never be skinny, but I will be strong. I will be really, really strong. I want my balance to be great because I'm of certain age now where most people lose their balance 
as they walk. And another few years, if you fall, let's be honest, we know yeah. the percentage Absolutely. of people who don't most survive. Of the death, most of the deaths happen because of uh, the pelvic uh, exactly. bone, which breaks exactly. when they trip or fall. Exactly. So in order to strengthen this, uh, the bones, weightlifting helps yeah. the osteopathosis. Yeah. And it's, it strengthens the bones and as well protects the muscles or the muscles that you're going to develop around this area will protect the bones as well. You mentioned something and I need an example from your side because I believe all the women who are listening now are very much excited about something that you said and maybe an example on what to eat to enhance the collagen as you said. So this is a trending word Yeah. and you see so many supplements out there, yeah. so many products that manufacturers do to sell and make money for the women. How can you get the collagen from the food and what type of food? So just give us an example. So collagen is an interesting one. First of all, I would tell you that 95% of collagen supplements do not work just like most uh, supplements in the marketplace. For example, if you buy a supplement that says vitamin C, for example, this supplement will have amount of vitamin C, but also a lot of fillers. So it's a bit like whether you buy a real designer goods or you go and buy them fake. You know, it's the same thing. They still look the same. They look like they will do the job, but slowly, slowly you realize that the fake one is a fake. So, and in supplements, they don't do the same goodness for you. So with collagen is particularly more tricky because collagen is better absorbed by the body through food. Yes, there is one or two very good supplements supplements in the marketplace that are extraction from bovine animals or this is for people who are non-vegan for example bovine it's like uh, animals that will eat the grass again so this is very but this is very expensive however when it comes down to food i would recommend that people most people in dubai let's be honest have cooks chefs etc so it's easy but for me i don't i do it myself i get very high quality uh, cartilage bones you know from veal or from beef can be chicken as well. No, lamb. Lamb, no. So sometimes I mix them together. Sometimes I just do one by one. Sometimes I add bone marrow. And then I put them in a very big pan that uh, I boil them. I boil them to oblivion. So you start with maybe uh, 10 liters, 8 liters, and you reduce it down to 5 liters. Now I then take the bones out. I throw them away because I've sucked all the goodness. And this is the best collagen. Now people think I don't have fillers. Well, I don't. I don't have Botox. I only put Botox here. I do a lot of lasers. I love lasers on my face. As you can see, I have skin discoloration, but at my age, I don't wear makeup because makeup ages me. So what I find also is that a lot of young women wear makeup all the time, but their skin becomes very bad underneath. Let's be honest, you're putting chemicals. Yes. And I like a little bit of something on my skin sometimes, but I find now that when I do my TV, for example, if I put heavy makeup, I look older and I don't want to look older. I can't afford at my age to look older. So one thing, the most important thing is that do the bone broth so it's messy but do it it's got a very nice amount of fat if you don't want this fat once it's cool get the fat out and keep it for cooking because it is the best fat and then the rest of it you put in small containers in the freezer you take out and you eat and you will see once it's set this is going to be gel jelly it's very very good for you now what i also do once i boil the bones i take the bones out and this is when i add um, greens i will add uh, celery onion carrots uh, parsley a lot of herbs. Now, the herbs to add are very important. You would add sage, you would add rosemary and oregano. There is an and try fresh with the sticks, with everything, with the stalks, everything, because they are a particularly powerful antioxidants. And uh, the whole combination, it's amazing. And what I usually do, I put about a handful on a eight liter of uh, bone broth. I put a handful of fresh turmeric roots. We sell them everywhere here. It's organic. Wash it, don't skin it, wash it, great it. I have my guys in the kitchen to grate it because that was orange fingers. And this will put you into a different dimension. Why? Because not only you're addressing the collagen, but you're also giving yourself so much beautiful infusion of the antioxidants I mentioned. So as far as this goes, this has to be your number one. Number two, if you're not going to bother with that and don't buy it from the shop because you don't know where they got the bones in the shop. And I will tell you now something. If you get it from an animal that has been fed with hormones, with antibiotics, and with various others, where does it go? It goes into the bone marrow. It is extremely dangerous. So if you get a bone broth that you don't know where the bones came from to be boiled, all this non-good 
goodness from the animal's yeah. bones, from the bone marrow. It's concentrated. It's con- it? So you're ingesting it. So being in control, it's messy, but do it. And that's why most women just don't bother with that, you know? Yeah. So So you mentioned no lamb, uh, right? No lamb, because uh, lamb is okay, but I don't like the fat of the lamb in there for, for the reason, because then it becomes too fatty. Now, let's be honest, we will talk again. I'd love to come on your podcast to talk about the fatty lamb, uh, fatty liver disease. We have too much fatty liver, 70% people worldwide without even realizing it. So if we try and reduce the impact on fat in our body, that's better. And um, I mean, you can mix it, but lamb bones on its own now. For example, I do key longevity retreat in Switzerland. So when I go to Switzerland, I do it in Finland as well. I get elk, you know, I get the bones from elk and you can't get nothing better than that. The meat itself, the bones themselves. So this is a little bit more highly specialist. But here we have plenty of organic supplies that can give you good quality organic bones. Get a mixture of cartilage. You want cartilage. You want exactly where the two bones are meeting because this is the goodness, the collagen. And get some bone marrow. I love bone marrow. I just love it. You know, it's a bit fat, but you just spoon it, eat it like that because this is tremendous. And failing that, there's a lot of other superfoods that you can incorporate in your food, but it's not the same. And with supplements, there is two supplements that uh, I would recommend, but again, we're not here to promote uh, companies and stuff. So try food. Food is the best. Food is the best. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, for the collagen, you know that I'm going to have next week uh, on my podcast, uh, Helen, who's Uh, a vegan. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Is there... This is a question that I will ask her, which will be very funny. Is there a way to get collagen from plant-based? She will tell you there is, but there is not. Because you see... Because you haven't mentioned anything no, apart from the animal, which is eating the I grass. will mention also the marine collagen. So we have some marine collagen from fish and from all that, you know. But, um, you know, it's like the other day, I do, I have a YouTube channel, you know. So one of my Russian clients called me and she's vegan. And she said, I'm expecting a baby, but I'm very concerned how I'm going to breastfeed this baby because I want it to be vegan. And, and my I'm not a vegan, I'm a human. And I said, oh my goodness, what is this world coming to, you know? So... No, I will tell you something. Unless you put animal collagen, there's no other collagen. No, other. see, it's a bit like proteins. You have a lot of proteins in legumes, in lentils and beans, but vegans will always suffer because they will always have to supplement with B12. And let's be honest, uh, you should really break it gently to Helen. I have to say that there is a massive U-turn. I've been on the vegan way for a long time now. I was the first chef in the UAE. I had eight restaurants here. My old brand was called Omnia and it was the award-winning brand. I won every award that there is to be won. I became and I still am one of the top power 50 chefs in the Gulf region, you know. So I was the first one to put vegan, but vegan on its own, I don't eat much meat. I just eat enough to keep my condition of my muscles, especially if you have an elderly person in the house over 60, elderly isn't me, you know, over 60, a person who is older and is over 60, that person must have to have animal protein because their muscles, the atrophy of their muscle is phenomenal. It's called sarcopensia. You know, the muscle begins to be weaker and weaker. Yeah, and starts Hence, itself, people yeah. are beginning to fall, losing their ability to walk properly. So with Helen, I'm sorry to say, all these years I've observed what's happening and I will tell you now there's a massive U-turn away from veganism. And I would say to your listeners, to our listeners now, reduce, if you're eating too much meat, reduce it. You don't need too much meat. And I'm sorry about your carnivore diet right now. <laughs> estimated, I would say as a rule of the thumb, estimated about 1 to 1.5 grams per your kg weight, yeah. for your body weight a day. Now, I eat a lot less than that because I actually don't feel I need more. But 75% to 80% of my plate are greens to the point that sometimes, unfortunately, I have to be around the toilet all the time. I know it does not sound very delicate and ladylike, but when you eat so many fibers, you know the key of biohacking, the number one rule of biohacking is to make sure that your gut works well. well. Now, I always give this as an example. Your gut it's our brain. We have two brains here and here. Why here? And you think, oh, what is she talking about? Yeah, our intestines so, so, so important. You know when you go and have a test, a school test, when you have an interview, you start getting uh, a bit like here, yeah. you know, because the brain, this is another brain. Often this brain signals this brain. And we women, we particularly suffer with gut issue. Do you know that 80% of women have constipation? 80% without even addressing it. Why? Because our intestine is 10 feet longer than the man intestine. So this alone creates 
it's a problem, an extra problem. Plus, we have uh, the extra added stress of life, women, children, birth, Over running the family. Thing. You know, you the main advocate for women, which is important because you're a man and you say it as it is, you know? So what I'm saying is that I always say, look after your gut. Imagine your gut is this uh, humming galaxy. Like I always say, my gut is this humming galaxy. There are all these suns and moons and stars floating, humming together, existing in this beautiful harmony. This is what you want. Only then you will not have an illness. We're not meant to be sick. The human body, it's marvelous. It's there to recover itself beautifully. Yet we all suffer from illness. Early onset of inflammation illness, like cardio, like cancers. Come on, everybody now expects to get a cancer. What is this? And it doesn't have to be like that. So the root for me, it's always the food. Absolutely. Yeah, they always say feed the gut and protect the liver. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And feed the gut means eat the right food for the gut. Exactly. Which, which is fiber, exactly. what you mentioned. See, again, I'd love to come and talk about the gut in extents because the gut, for, I study my gut. I do tests all the time. That's what I do. I do lots of blood tests and lots of functional tests. With my personal clients, I create these longevity protocols and I work very closely with doctors. I'm not a doctor, but I've learned so much, you know, so I know more or less when I see something. If person is sick, yeah, go to the doctor. But if I can avoid going to the doctor as long as possible, alhamdulillah, that is all I want. So when it comes down to the gut, we have trillions of bacteria in there, you know? And the interesting thing is that it's only about three or four or five percent of bacteria that is the repetitive one. The 95 percent of bacteria are individual. There are millions of lots of others. So let's at least start scaring to the three to five percent of majority of bacteria. For example, there is a very important bacteria called acromensia. And I learned slowly, slowly about it because uh, that bacteria is in the mucus of the gut. It's the protection of the gut. And it's a very interesting thing. You cannot get it with supplements. So let's learn that taking food, it's imperative because most of the time supplements cannot do what food does for us. And right now, maybe it's a lot more information than people expect to hear. But if people remember one thing is to start paying attention to what food they eat. Imagine food to be information. A cucumber is information, burger is information, kebab is information, shawarma is information. What information do you require to put in your body? Do you require the bright cognitivity information that blueberry will give you? Or do you require the nonsense information that uh, shawarma will give you? What is shawarma going to give you? Some protein, some fries, some oils, and not the good oils, the omega-6 oils, let's be honest. I'm yet to find shawarma that is, uh, you know. So think about it and apply the rule which I apply, which I recommend everyone, 80-20. 20% of the time, allow yourself everything and anything, within reason, of course, any food. 80% of the time, eat with intention. And and only then you will be winning. Interesting. Very, very lovely advice. You mentioned something regarding your success in opening up the doors for uh, vegan to be present in restaurants and uh, most of the restaurants right now when you go there, you open up the menu, there's vegan uh, friendly menu. I've realized the other extreme, which is, for example, for me, mm -hmm. A carnivore. I do have zero selections there. Everything is mixed with carbs. Everything is mixed with vegetables. And when you come and ask them, I just need something, just beef, for example, just a piece of a steak without anything. It is very difficult to find such thing. Don't you think that this is something like, for example, over here as well? It took me a while to make the chef understand that I just need the portion of uh, chicken. I don't need to pay for the potatoes. I don't need to pay yeah. for the other yeah. stuff. Yeah. So is it something that you can add as well, maybe, or open up the doors? Because I, I see a big rise in this uh, yeah. area. I mean, I'm, I'm a very much a um, supporter of what you're saying, because I very often will have without the protein, because I want the vegetables, for example, only I'm the yes. other way around, you know, because uh, I feel that uh, a little bit of protein, but I'm not on this carnivore, and I don't think I ever can be. It's just not my thing, but but you have a different goal. So we, this is the beauty of life with different people. So here, of course, it's not a problem. I mean, even the chicken that we've introduced is organic chicken. So, and this is amazing. And the other day, the trainer spoke to me. I have one trainer, he's a very big guy. He eats two chickens a day. And I, and he says to me, oh, he says, can you reduce the price? I said, listen, you're eating something which is bio, which is organic, which is clean, no hormone, no antibiotic, no nothing. And you know what, chicken is very interesting. You wonder why so many young children have asthma 
drama and start uh, mood swings and all that because chicken from stage of a chick from a little egg chick to becoming a chicken that is sold in the supermarket is 20 20 five to 29 days, maximum 32, 33 days, you know? So in this period of time, most of these chickens, let's say 95% of broiler chicken, as I call them, are injected with sodium, with hormones, with antibiotics because they're in batteries. And because they're so close together, they don't want them to get illness and have to die and then lose the stock. So just think, 29 days, 29 days is not enough for this liver, for this chicken to be free of everything you fed it. Then it's slaughtered and it's put on the shop for sale. So you and me, we're adults. Imagine a child, a young child, you're doing something and suddenly boom, everything is in there. We love chicken liver. I love liver. I love liver. I love chicken liver so much. Never ever touch a chicken liver from a broiler chicken because all these impurities are there. So literally you're getting a condensation, let's call them nasties because that's what they are. I'm sorry to say it, say it as it is. Of all the antibiotics, all the sodium, all the additives, all the hormones that this chicken has been fed, you put them in your body in a very nice compact form. Yeah, it's delicious. You know, I can cook it to you in any way. Mm. See, I love Indian food. I love going to Karma, Burdubai, but I don't touch the meat because I know these people where they get the meat from. This meat is cheap. Seven, eight dirham a chicken. <sighs> I don't have to tell you what's in there. So basically, it's not a problem here. We have a lot of protein eaters, and this is the reason I changed the chicken to organic. That's the reason I changed the meat. No other restaurant, I guarantee you, especially no other establishment, will take care of your hormonal expression through the protein I'm offering you. Because they don't care. They just put the meat, and people think, oh, eat meat, eat burgers. But what's in there? What's in there? Because you're not doing yourself a favor. Yeah, there is some protein, of course, it's meat. But uh, ultimately, you are adding layers and layers and layers of everything that this animal has been fed with. And then there is the stress hormone of the adrenaline of the animal being killed, you know. At least in this country, we have a halal, alhamdulillah, you know, because then it's not just being tasted the meat, it needs to be healthy. Only then I eat it, you know. So here I, I would spend money, but I would say, people, people say it's too expensive, I'll say, go and buy an organic chicken. Instead of cooking it once, cook it twice. Get the bouillon out, get the bones out, do a risotto with it. Be creative. Use your imagination. Don't need to give half a chicken per person. No, no. Small amount. And as long as you flavor everything else, it works like that. Because then you give them something good. It's good for their body, but also good for our environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. I think this topic is like uh, super extreme and super and you you sound like a huge ocean of knowledge about this biohacking which I like because you are mixing both the knowledge and the expertise of you as a chef and how to combine this in, in yeah. food and this is what's missing in this world right now is how to make the food tasty yet healthy yes you're because right. when I, I'm a coach when I tell people eat this and eat that they're like you're just asking me to go and eat the uh, hospital food mm. which to be honest with you this is something also that I want to touch base on is I've had two surgeries and I was in the hospital and I've seen the type of food that they serve I agree. a juice which is from a grocery sweet stuff oh, uh, too much uh, this this is not healthy I I couldn't eat anything I was ordering from outside asking the person who was next to me in both the operations to give me what I want yeah and I know what I want yeah but how can we educate hospitals and big companies like uh, leading hospitals I just, about their food. I just so love you asking me this question. I wrote to Abu Dhabi Health Authority. I have the letter. I wrote to them. I'm a specialist in nutrigenomics. Exactly this. Exactly. I've been banging on for so long now saying you cannot treat in a hospital a person who broke their arm, person who has a problem with their eye, person who has cancer, person who has heart attack with the same food. And that's what happens. We are not helping them. We're giving them food because Oh, we just have to give them something to eat. So the field is called nutrigenomics. I specialize in nutrigenomics because it's related to the DNA. It's related to the way you express yourself, your need, you know? So I have written, it's fallen on deaf ears. I haven't heard because imagine how much we will help doctors as well because the doctor is there. The doctor is not God, you know? Sometimes only Allah will help you. The doctor will do the utmost, but if you continue to eat the bad way, nothing. So and in hospital is very often when people are in recovery, it's a beautiful process of their life to change the way they eat, to say, you have a second chance. God has given you a second chance. The doctor saved your life. Now it's time to turn around the way you eat. Now it's time to be re-educated.
needed, you know? Because did you know that in UAE is the only country in the world where the older generation outlives the younger generation? And that's an alarming fact. Yes. Because the older generation used to eat this beautiful and still beautiful, wholesome, delicious food, the animals from the yard, the f- the, the plants and all that. The younger generation, ooh, their lifestyle is all about fast, fast. and furious food. Furious, yeah. furious, angry food. Why do you think there's so much road rage in America? Because they're stuffing themselves with nasty, furious, angry, fast processed food. And it affects you. That's why I always say, if you eat the right foods for your physique, for your body, it affects your mental health. You become a better, happier, more content person. And their life opens all sorts of opportunities for you. I've seen it with myself. So with the hospitals, I'd love somebody who is in a position to hear that because we need to change that, you know? I also have been in a hospital here for a small little procedure and the food was... Whew. Yeah, yeah, you, you cannot touch it and I feel really sorry for them. And uh, as I was saying, and you mentioned also, like the, the type of food, when you tell my, I tell my client, eat this, they say like, ah, oh, I don't want to eat like boring food. So you make it more sound easy, how to flavor, how to make yeah. a good fun, uh, yeah. the food fun and good to eat and yeah. healthy where yeah. uh, people, I love this. And uh, this is exactly what the world uh, needs. And this is exactly what you are here for. Thank and, you so uh, much. Thank you. I mean, we need to clone you and uh, copy a lot of it. <laughs> See, people, it's very simple. People eat this bad food. They eat it through the years and then suddenly, inevitably, so if believe me, wallah, believe me, inevitably, they will get an inflammatory condition. It adds up, but it's a slow, slow and devious process. Do you understand? Slow and devious. If people went skiing, broke their leg, they'll be much more careful next time. They may not even go skiing anymore because it happened like that. But with food, you add up. You Why is food cheap why are people not asking you why is this food so cheap in the supermarket are they asking wow why is this food so expensive and su- why ask me uh, once yeah. me why are people not questioning why is this food so cheap they grab it they want it there's a reason there's a reason so i will never stop tirelessly to educate people because it doesn't have to be expensive you know i have a routine routine is very important in biohacking i've obviously am very advanced i do a lot of uh, various supplements i do a lot of work with my cellular health i do a lot of work with my plasma you actually adds up but let's start with the food let's create the foundation and then we are looking into something that will make us go into a different dimension what do you think Elon Musk does he is constantly on various different biohacks for his brain to be sharp as a razor because he has to be he's in a situation which he cannot be all of these people at this level are biohacking rightly or wrongly they're there because he can't afford a minute in which his brain is resting now that is his career to bury and to carry you know i would not like that but he's chosen this path for himself so for example he entertains quite a lot of very high quality various additives psychedelics and that kind of thing i'm not in psychedelics that's another subject we will discuss but i believe to work for certain conditions for parkinson's for alzheimer's it says that it works but you know what let's prevent it let's not go there let's avoid it altogether you know what alzheimer's is called also it's diabetes, diabetes three type three I know. So we know that all diabetes, no, not type one. But type two is mostly reversible. Uh, reversible. reversible. You can. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's related to food. And type three, which is Alzheimer's, is also uh, from food. And you know the sad thing about Alzheimer's, just I mentioned, it begins to set around age 30 plus, and nobody thinks that they are having it. But it starts and builds up and builds up, and it's to do with diet and regime. That's it. You know. So right now, what I'd like to say, people with biohacking, start eating foods that carry the right information for you. Imagine you this superlatively powerful, incredible artificial intelligence computer of some sort. Imagine, because you are you and you are unique. What is your superpower? My superpower is that I feed myself in a way that I excel and I'm a better version of myself the next day. Do you know the feeling? You know the feeling, but most people don't know the feeling to wake up in the morning and to go like a jack in a box. What am I going to do today? This is what biohacking does. It gives you this extra power, extra energy, extra invincibility. When I go to these uh, various uh, conferences and podcasts and uh, summits to do it biohacking. When you see a biohacker walk, they biohack walk. It's they different. walk on a, on these little springs. They walk like they don't drag their feet. If, 
even so they're 70 and 80, they're young, their mentality is young because they know what they do to them, they're in a different dimension. So there are lots of stages to biohacking. It can be very simple, but it can be very complicated, could be even dangerous. People, I know Dave Asprey, who is the father of biohacking, I speak to him sometimes. He biohacks in some very strange ways, but he tries things because he wants to give us the best of his knowledge. Another biohack that I do, I will mention only, is the ultra red lights, you know. Uh, we have also the cold plunges as well. I'm not a cold person, but I love the infrared sauna, I love the infrared lights, the recovery for the body. These are all biohacks. The aura ring for a sleep, it's all biohacks. So you don't have to go so technical and spend money. Start with the food. See, say to yourself, what am I lacking? Am I lacking energy? Is my skin bad? What is happening? Is my liver mm, fatty? Because you see, people may do all the blood tests for the liver, but it's still liver can be fatty. So unless you do the proper checkups, they don't know. So it's not about detox. It's about continuously eating the right foods. And then you program and it affects your mind. And then, of course, one of these days, we must talk about nootropics because it's the number one subject in the world. So, and food are number one nootropics. And then you go to nootropics as a supplement. So I think I don't want to say too much anymore because at the end of the day, we kind of very nicely scratch the surface today. You allowed me very nicely to hopefully introduce and to fire up people. Because if people want to be a younger version of themselves, I do these tests all the time. My biological age is between seven and eight, nine years, always less than my chronological age. I do tests all the time. But the most important thing is how you feel. You know how you feel. You know how you perform, Absolutely. physically how you perform, you know. And then if something is sluggish or something isn't happening, then make sure you check your hormonal picture whether you're a man or a woman, because you will find hormones are out of uh, sync very often. And they do not have to be. They can be put right. Because, you with know... With the proper food, with the proper... Proper food and then a proper regime as well. You see, exercise is very good. Like I told you, if exercise is the king, nutrition is the queen. I told you that and it's this. true. I love this uh, quote. It's uh, It should be like, I think, the title of the subject of the podcast today. Very good. Because, yeah. you know what? And I will also add to that that the queen rules the roost. Let's be honest. Absolutely. I mean, who rules the roost in your house? Is of it course. you? Of course. It's an illusion. That's good. We like it like that. <laughs> Especially, it is very important because I also appeal to women because it's women who runs the household. See, it's me. Do you know, my husband wouldn't eat anything green ever, ever. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And you know, we're not talking about a young person here. We're talking a person with established habits. I changed all this. I changed all this. You know, he now is on a series of supplements as well. And it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. But to be on supplements without having sorted your situation is building a house without foundation it will collapse absolutely thank you very much uh, thank you very Sagana. much we love this uh, topic today and uh, the diversity of knowledge that you have is definitely something that i will invest in doing more we'll speak about the different topics that we can come up with uh, thank you later very on. much but thank you very much thank you for, for allowing me to introduce your audiences to that and i'd appreciate their questions as well yeah, to i me. believe i believe their questions uh, will be guiding us towards the next Next uh, topic that we will yeah. uh, definitely yeah. have to talk about. Very good. Because yeah. in a way, exercising is biohacking as well. You know, you're biohacking everything, you know. So now, if you manage to do the exercise, which we all more or less like you do and you advise people how to do it, food is no less important. Yeah. It's a very big thing. So thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarah.